So we're going to learn about isotopes, how to calculate isotopes. So when you have isotopes, you have a bunch of different weights of atoms, right? And when you put those weights, the different weights of atoms together, you actually get a really strange weight. So if you look at the periodic table, for example, chlorine, if you look at the periodic table, chlorine has a mass of 35.4527, right? But didn't I just finish telling you that you, like, how can you get this if protons and neutrons weigh one? Right? How do you get some random number with a bunch of decimals? The reason why is because this isn't just referring to only the chlorine that weighs 35. What if you also had a chlorine that weighed something like 37, right? Now, what would determine the actual weight of those? If you had chlorine 35 and let's say chlorine like 37, what would determine the weight of those? How many of each you had. Does that make sense? So let's try and look at it in a simpler example. Let's say that we had 10 people, all right? And of our 10 people, we had six boys that weighed 180 pounds each and four girls that weighed 120 pounds each. Well, everyone probably wants to do this the way that, my guess is a lot of you want to do, is you just want to say I have 180 pounds times six boys to get the total weight of boys, right? And then you'd want to just say, let's add that to four girls times 120 pounds. And then you'd want to take that whole number and divide by the number of people, right? How many people are there? 10. That would work for that average. But let's try another way using percentages, because that's what we're going to need to use. So let me ask you real quick, what is the percent of boys that we have? What's the percent of boys? Very good. 60% boys, right? What percent girls do we have? 40. Very good. 40 percent girls. So I want to calculate something called a weighted average. So we're going to use these numbers to find a weighted average. Well, what is a, what, what can I, for 60 percent, what does that really mean? Percent. What does percent mean? I mean, I'll write it down for you guys. Per, let's, let's do a different color so we don't get confused. Percent per cent. What does that mean? For every one part. For every 100. Century, right? This is 100. And by the way, per means divide. That's what we get when we see per. So this means over 100. So what is 60 over 100? Really, what is that number? 0.6. What is 40%? Okay, so we're going to use these numbers, 0.6 and 0.4, to refer to how much of the weight each of these account for. So if the boys are 180 pounds, I can multiply that by the fraction of the weight the boy accounts for, right? So what fraction of the weight do they account for? Because there's 60% of them are boys, it would be a weight of 0.6. Now, let's add that to the girls. What, how much do the girls weigh? 120 pounds, and then what fraction of the weight is from the girls? So, 0.4. Now let me ask you a question. What is the total fraction, and what should it always be when you sum these two together? One, one right? That should, it has to be one, if you're referring to everything. So let's try the math. What is 180? times 0 0.6, 108, <coughs> and then what's 120 times 0.4? It's actually 48 pounds. 
Now, are we saying that the guy weighs 108 and the girl weighs 48? No, that's not what we're saying. We're saying that once you say that it's only 60% of the weight is from the boys, it'd be 108 pounds that the boy weight is contributing. Do you understand? And 48 pounds that the girl weight is contributing. So now all you have to do is add those together. 108 plus 48, and it would be an average weight of 156 pounds per person. If you did all this math, you would also get 156 pounds. So we're seeing how much each contributes. The power of this is it uses the fraction or percentage for each of these. Now, what about chlorine or any other element? This same exact math is what's going to help us, right? So over here is this problem, and it's the bottom problem on that worksheet that I gave you guys, right? The very bottom problem here, and I organized this information into a table. So if we have magnesium, and magnesium had three isotopes, here's our three isotopes. I gave you the mass of each, the exact mass of each. So this is the 24 isotope, had a 23.985 mass, so on and so forth. And then I gave you the percent of each. So where do these percents come from? They actually come from nature. So as they went out into nature and took a sample of magnesium, they found that 78.99% of it was the 24 isotope. Make sense? 10% of it was the 25 isotope with this mass. So now what is the atomic mass of magnesium? That's the question from this. What do we do? Well, we need to do each of these weighted. So let me ask you guys a question. Instead of percent, if I want weight in the non-percent form, what would this one be? Zero point what? 7899. Very good. Just move the decimal place. What would this one be? 0 0.1. And what would this one be? 0 0.1101. Right? Now, how do I set these up? Well, the 24 isotope contributes, right? And the 25 isotope and the 26 isotope. So, what do I do for each one? First of all, the 24 one is. 23.985 times what? 0.7899. There you go. Times 0.7899. Now how about the 25 isotope? 24.986 plus, or times, sorry. Times what? And then we're going to add that finally to what? Our 26 isotope, which is 25.983 times what? 0 0.1101. So now let's order of operations, right? We're going to multiply first. So let's multiply all those. 23.985 times 0.7899. So this gives us the weight that's coming from this one isotope. And we get 18 point, let's keep the sig figs, 18.95. Plus, next one, 24.986 times 0.1, and we get 2.498, so it's going to be 2.500. Zero, zero. <coughs> Plus 25.983 times 
2.861. So this, by the way, people get all tripped out because they look and they say, wait, this is the bigger isotope. Why is there a smaller number here? So let me ask you guys that. Why is there a smaller number here from the more massive isotope? There's only 10% of polymer. Very good. There's only 10%. There's less of it, right? So that's why that only contributes that much. By the way, last question that's really important to ask in these. When I'm calculating my answer, what, where had it better be? Like, what do you know it has to be above and below? It has to be above the smallest and below the biggest. There you go. Well answered. So we get 24.31 AMU. That is, I mean 24, yeah, 24.31 AMU. That is above what? The smallest and below the biggest. the biggest. If you don't get something between smallest and the biggest, you've done something horribly wrong. Right? So that's how you calculate these. Now, last thing to bear in mind. You guys notice how I set these up. It's basically a formula, right? So what do you have on these formulas? You always have the isotope mass times what? Yep, the weight. And by weight, I mean what? By weight, I mean from percent, right? That's what I mean by weight, mm -hmm. right? And then what do you add that to? Isotope mass number two. Yep, isotope. Isotope number two's mass, and then you add that multiplied by weight of it, right? Mm -hmm. And if you add all those up, you're going to get the average atomic mass. Now, let me tell you guys something. What if you were given the average atomic mass? Could you be asked to find any of these? Yes. Yes. I would have to give you the average atomic mass. I would have to give you one isotope's mass and its percent and another isotope's mass and ask for the weight. Does that make sense? Okay. I can give you all of these and ask for you to find one that you don't know. So these questions can be asked in any way. Just set it up like this. And by the way, what if there was another isotope? What if there's three instead of two? It would just be these two terms again, right? <coughs> as many as you want. All right, that's it.